All right, guys, we're gonna start a still life. A still life is a picture of something that doesn't move. And we're gonna start by thinking of five things that are around our house that are valuable or mean something to us. I have these worksheets and they're just pictures of different things that I think kids your age might be interested in. If you do not see something that's important to you in this, you can draw from your memory. So with me, I like books. So I'm going to start by following along here by making a rectangle, two curved lines, and I can even write the name of a book I like, Harry Potter. And down here it says, why are these objects valuable to you? I like to read with a little smiley face. And then I'm gonna think of something else that's important to me maybe a pair of glasses because they help me see. And you're gonna keep working like that until you have five different objects that mean something to you. I'll time lapse you while I finish. So these are just a few of mine. So things that you might find valuable are things that are one of a kind, things that bring joy, things made of special things, expensive things. So there's a little list down here to help you decide what's important to you. Now I'm going to think about how I can use these in a still life. A still life is a picture of something that doesn't move. So we're gonna end up making ours using a crayon transfer technique. But to start, we have a big piece of paper and we're gonna fold it in half and keep it folded and pretend like it's a small piece of paper. We're just gonna ignore this whole side for now. And we're gonna create a composition of these objects. You can overlap, have things go behind. So I think I'm gonna start in front with my glasses. And you don't need to make all five things. If you have the object with you, like for example, I have my glasses with me because I'm wearing them, I can take them off and look at them. I'm gonna make the part that goes behind my ears. If I make a mistake, I'm not worrying. I'm just erasing and fixing. All right, I think behind there, I'm going to draw a book. So it looks like maybe I was reading and I just set my book down. So I'm kind of creating a scene that tells a story about me. Now right there, I ran out of space and I'm gonna let it run off the side of the paper. Instead of trying to squeeze something on, it's better to let it run right off the side. So there's my book and on the spine, I'm gonna write Harry Potter in fancy letters, cursive. Maybe I can make some little lines here so it looks like there's lots of writing on the cover. I can even draw a picture of the cover of the Harry Potter book. Maybe over here, I'll make a little cup like I was drinking hot cocoa when I was reading. And you're gonna work like that until you're happy with your still life. I'll make a spoon coming out so it looks like I'm stirring my hot cocoa. When I'm overlapping like that, I'm gonna erase. Maybe I'll make a little bit of a whipped cream topping there. And I'll time lapse you while I finish up. All right, now my still life is finished. You can tell a lot about me. You can tell that I like reading, I like writing, I wear glasses, I love hot cocoa and sweets, and I like plants too. I'm gonna open this up like it's a book, and inside opposite. So when I open it, I'm leaving that where I did my still life up, and on the inside opposite, I'm going to just create a page where I color and create a composition. I want mine to look like drips. What we're gonna do is make a transfer. That means I'm going to press back on top and the color will show through. And it's almost like we're recreating our still life in a different way. So I'm using pastels and I'm pressing hard. The harder I press, the brighter my colors will be. You could do a radial design, meaning you start with a circle and color around it. Like I said, I'm doing drips, you could do stripes, 
but your goal is to fill the whole paper with lots of different bright dark colors. So I wouldn't color it all blue. I'm making a little area blue and then I'm gonna change colors. I'm kind of trying to stay off this top area here, but you can see I made a little mistake and got on there and it's not a huge big deal. I'll finish this area and then I'll time lapse you while I finish the rest because this is kind of a time consuming process. But like I said, the harder you push, the brighter your colors are gonna wind up being and the more contrast, contrast means opposites next to each other. So the more different colors you'll have next to one another, the brighter and more fun your piece will look. All right, now that I'm done with that, I'm gonna fold my paper down so I'm looking at my still life and give it a good crease. And what I'm gonna do is take a pen and I'm gonna trace hard over all of my lines. So I'm going over my plant here. And like I said, I'm pushing hard. And we're using a pen so you can be sure that you get all your lines. If I do it in pencil, sometimes it's hard to tell. And I'm gonna leave mine folded until the end because sometimes when you fold it back down, you fold it differently and that'll really ruin how it turns out. So I know it's tempting to take a lot of peaks, but be patient because if I lift it up and then fold it back down differently, it's gonna ruin the whole transfer. I'll time lapse you while I do this because it is another time consuming step, meaning it's not easy, but you'll see pretty easily how I'm tracing. Okay, now you can see that I've traced over everything. Oops, not quite everything, I missed these polka dots. And that's why we do it with the pen, because I did notice that because I saw the polka dots weren't done in red. You'll see in some areas that I didn't go exactly over my pencil, my hand kind of moved differently, and that's okay. I can't really erase this, and I'm just not gonna worry too much if my lines don't line up exactly. So now what I'm gonna do is take this, open it, and flip it over. And you can see what I have is a reverse drawing of that still life I created. Now what I'm gonna do is use pastels to add some contrast. Remember we said contrast is light next to dark. And I'm just gonna fill in some of my background here. So that way my cup kind of stands out. Maybe I'll add a little brown in there to show that it's hot chocolate. I can go back over lines, like maybe I don't think this line is quite bright enough. And I can add a, just a little more color in that way. But you can see it's really fun that my drawing turned into this bright, bright drawing. You'll also see when I did this, mine can kind of serve as an example, that the yellow didn't show up that great. So if you're doing yours, maybe you don't wanna use yellow, maybe you wanna use more saturated colors like reds and blues. Maybe I'll fill in my plants here. And I'm just kind of working on it until I feel happy with the way it's turned out. So I actually kind of have three different pieces of art as I've done this. I have my still life that I initially drew. I have that color field I did where I created drips. Maybe you made more of a tie dye look. And now I have this piece of art that's a transfer. It's the reverse drawing of what I initially did. So kind of a cool process. I cannot wait to find out what you're interested in and what you really like to do in your piece of art.